guys welcome back to the channel so as you've seen in the description what we got going on we're doing a little bit of work on the sc300 today um still a lot of ways to go well still a long way to go hopefully you guys seen the last video but like i dropped like a uh, a week or so ago some time on my hands today i'm trying to knock as much stuff out on the car as possible so if you happen to see me again in another video with my jumper my exact same outfit you know why it's because i picked more than one video together today hopefully i still got enough steam in me as far as energy to do all the tasks i got at hand um so if you've been keeping up with the station you already know i had ordered in a distributor delete kit um that's pretty much so that way i can take the distributor out which is this if you have a non vvti you know exactly what this thing is i just have a nice pretty cap on mine um, so I got a distributor delete kit so that way I don't have to run a distributor anymore. I can actually run cam and crankshaft sensors. The reason why I'm doing away with the distributor is because it's nothing really wrong with the distributor. You can't make power on the distributor, but for one, you can't really get your timing down as precise as you would say as a cam and crankshaft sensor would as far as getting the signal through. Um, and two, you know, it's just this big, huge, humongous thing it'll pretty much just give you a modern look let's just put it that way give you a modern look give you better tunability uh you know just overall you know cleaner look that's what we're going for right let's sit this down it's because there's nothing wrong with this i don't want to break it all right um before we go any further if you keep it up with me on my social media you already seen what kit i had about the super v world kit that's the actually kit i actually have right here me personally um i picked this kit there's a ton of kits out there I know of like three different ones besides this one. I honestly chose this one is because um, the guy who makes this kit actually made a lot of stuff for two J's and one J's over the years. And his stuff has been proven to work for one. For two, he came out with YouTube videos showing his products work and put it on his own personal car. That's two. And three, he's a real enthusiast the way as though like, to me, he really likes likes what he does it's not about the dollar with him because if it was more so about the dollar he wouldn't be installing it on his car he would just make the parts and just dish the parts out for sale like a lot of the companies do that's the real reason why i picked the super v world kit that's my personal preference your preference might be for goldie's kits or whoever kit that makes whoever kit i'm not bashing anyone's distributor delete kit or trigger kits they call them trigger kits too or trigger kits at all i'm just saying this is why i chose this kit just because i feel as though i would have better results with this in my opinion because a lot of the kits when i looked online i was a little confused i'm still kind of confused on this but he kind of clarified it and he's supposed to be making a video on installing it on his car and all that good stuff all right and all that's out the window now good so I'm going to show you uh, the kit I actually got. It's two parts to this kit. It's an upper part for your camshafts and the camshaft sensor and a nice little nice bracket. That's what I actually got. I didn't get the crankshaft sensor part. And uh, it's like a bracket so you drill into your oil pump and all that. Because if you know with a 2JZ non-VVTI, um, the oil pumps on those don't have a, a, a spot on them for your crankshaft sensor. You need a crankshaft sensor. Um, but on the 2JZ Navi VTI, it doesn't come with that part. So he makes the kit and gives you like a drill bit or whatever to drill through your oil pump. Me personally, I wouldn't feel safe doing that. That's just me personally because I be messing, I be messing up a lot with a lot of stuff. So I try to avoid that, you know, as much as possible. And while my engine was apart, I actually put a 2JZ GE VVTI oil pump on my actual engine for that specific reason. So I can run a crankshaft sensor. And I didn't have to use that part of the kit. Not knocking that part of the kit at all. If you're in that situation, um, I've seen him use that as far as drilling it and putting a bracket on. It works. Um, so you can try it if you want. Totally up to you. Me, I opted out with that, especially because my motor was already out the car. If my motor was in the car, I might have went with that, but my motor was out of the car, so I lucked up. All right. So I'm just pretty much just show you guys what I got in the kit. I did a little bit of work on it already as far as... Uh, my timing my upper timing belt cover um you got to drill through here it comes with this nice bracket so this bracket amount with your actual uh uh <laughs> serpentine belt pulley the tensioner for that so the mount there to come through here and your mount 
the cranks camshafts you'll see all that when we get out there because it's going to confuse you if you've never seen the kit before so i'm gonna just show you what we got in the box all right so like i said i opened the box upside down i really don't remember why i opened it upside down i guess i was so happy to get it um it didn't come with the timing belt and it didn't come with this billet timing belt tensioner um the reason why i got this uh this is auto sports engineering um there's no branding on here that's surprisingly surprise um this is from auto sports engineering um all the parts i'm going to leave a link in the description as a usual engine up or all that bad stuff anyway this that doesn't come to kit don't worry about that right now um so you get the bracket this was actually mounted together but uh oh this was actually mounted together but um when i went and drilled this what i did was it comes with a sheet of paper i'm sorry it's going to be a little confusing maybe i hope not so it actually comes with directions on how to do it so you see top of cover is this line bottom of cover is this line so what i actually did was i just used these two i set these down on my on my cover set those down on my cover i tried to line this up as best as i could i poke holes still with a screwdriver and i hit it with a whiteout marker once i drilled these out good enough with um i had a step up bit where is it i used the step up bit because this is you know multiple sizes on it so you just keep drilling at it until you get to your size sorry about that i used the step up bit drilled all the way through it made sure that so this whole part right here has to slide through here. So I made sure this can actually slide through and everything fits. And once I did that, all right, so once I drilled these two holes out, I actually set this on here, made sure they slid in. I don't wanna take it out the plastic so you gotta bear with me. I made sure that the camshaft sensor slid in on this side. And what I did was I took the whiteout marker and I just marked here, mark here, move this out the way and I drilled through it. Yes, my holes are a little bit too big, but it's okay because it actually mounts onto this bracket. So it's not like what I thought at first was, I thought everything mounted to the cover, but it doesn't. You just drilling holes through your cover and it's actually mounted to this part of the bracket that's actually bolted onto the engine, which is beautiful. That's the beautiful thing about this kit is it's not just mounted onto this. Uh, all the kits pretty much come with like a bracket like that. So uh, when I got it, I was just like relieved that it wasn't like just mounted or bolted onto this. All right, so it doesn't come with this. You got it. You should have one of these on your car. So the kit comes with the camshaft sensors and the brackets. Um. Oh yeah timing gears i wanted to go over this stuff before i even get to the car so that way everybody's on the same page with the timing gears he installs this little bolt right here so that way the camshaft sensor don't kill me for this so the camshaft sensor can actually ping off of this and send a signal to the ecu letting the ecu know the position of the cam gear um you have to get these. If you run this kit, you have to use his cam gears. No other gears will work with his kit. And what I did was, oh, and it says exhaust side on here and set the stock. So these are pretty much like stock cam stock cam gears, which is perfect for real. Um, when it comes to this, I actually pulled the screws out one at a time and I put red Loctite just because I don't want these things backing out at all. I did it on the exhaust side and the intake side. It comes with two gears boom all right comes with these bolts believe these bolts is to actually mount this bracket to where the serpentine belt pulley uh the serpentine belt tensioner would be um we'll see when we get out there in the car this is this is not even a practice run this is the real deal we're gonna drop this in today um and then this is just the crankshaft sensor so that's nothing um, and then it actually comes with directions on where to actually pin the harness because this kit does come with a harness, but I kind of messed up and let me explain. All right. I know I found this kit a couple, well, about a month ago or so, um, but I wasn't really trying to buy it right then and there because I had to use the funds to buy other stuff for the motor so that way the motor could be actually together. So what I did was I put the actual parts in the cart 
And when I went back to find my cart, I could not find the cart at all. I don't know what was going on. May have been, might have been my signal on my phone that day. I'm not sure at all. But when I put the first kit in the cart, I was like, I don't really need that harness. I'm going to make my own wire harness. Until I realized I should get everything that comes in the kit and stop just being cheap. Whatever crap I was on, I don't know what I was thinking. But long story short, when I went back and I couldn't find the cart, I made another order. So... I had two of the same kits in my cart, but one kit was missing the harness. Can you, you, you see where this is going? Do you see, you see where this is going at, right? So I went to total it up. I'm like, wow, hold up, bro. This thing is saying like almost like $1,200. That's not right. And I look, I say, oh, it's two kits. And then I thought about it. Oh, I got to delete one. Boom, I deleted one and I just straight ordered the other one. The one I deleted was the new one that I actually included the harness in and I ordered this kit. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I went ahead, I ordered the harness, but it's coming from Australia and I gotta wait for like another two to three weeks for it to come. That's my bad, that's my bad at all. It's perfect too because he gives you that option to actually piece your kit together. When I went to see a couple other kits, I'm not gonna say the names, you guys can go figure it out. Um, it's just a kit. They don't give you the option to piece it together. And me being me, if, I, if you know me personally, you know I love to piece my kits and stuff together. Like I did with my turbo kit, I like to put it together the way I like it. You know what I'm saying? So that's another good thing about the Super V World um, uh, uh, cam and crankshaft sensor kit. That's perfect. Um, yeah, it's perfect. That's another thing. I really like that. Um, and then you have the actual plug actually plug in where the distributor would sent so you won't have oil splashing all over the place so and then it comes with these shims because you have to actually put these shims in between the camshaft sensors and it comes with direction so we're gonna knock it out i'm sorry if i confused you a little bit i'm about to drink this monster real quick i've been up since like yesterday i've been up for too long i'm about to drink this put this up in me we're gonna bust this thing down and I'm going to try to do some more stuff, bro. Let's get to it. <clears throat> All right, so I pretty much got everything together. Um, this is just a spare intake manifold. Lower half, um, I just put it on there and mock it up for my harness. Don't worry about anything but here. So with the camshafts, everything is pretty much set. Well, I got to set everything to top dead center and just start bolting everything on. Um, but I just wanted to show you with the oil pump. I'll take these out while I'm just doing it. Come on, come on, come on. All right. So when it comes to the oil pump, what I was saying, with the crankshaft, with the crankshaft, since if you don't know, um, you actually need a VVTI uh, timing gear down here for these back teeth right here on the back so that way the sensor plugs into right here the um, crankshaft sensor plugs into right here I probably got to move this out the way but it plugs into right here and as it spins it pings off of the teeth here and the camshaft sensors actually ping and everybody collide as far as information and send the information to the ECU so if you have the non-VVTI pump you won't have this hole for the sensor to plug into so that's what I was saying it'd just be this ridge right here and you had to drill into it this way and he makes a bracket that bolts onto it so it looks pretty simple like I said I usually just mess stuff up so while the engine was apart I went ahead and put a VVTI oil pump on it so I don't know if the oil pressure with these are different as far as with the VVTI uh, non-VVTI I heard that this one is supposed to push a little bit more pressure but i'm not 100 percent sure i'll let you guys know once the car gets started so it's like mad cold out here so i'm gonna go ahead and try to knock this out and uh give you guys a look see how i got it going all right so we have the timing gears installed it's a 17 mil for these um, so what I'm doing, I'm just trying to get this as precise as I get it. So I go ahead, spin it around, make sure nothing's binding up, take my time, try to get it as precise as I can, tapping on it, you know what I'm saying, just get it there where it needs to be.
and then with the crankshaft, I go ahead and spin it same as the top. Um, make sure nothing's bonding up. Um, make sure um it lines up perfectly, as perfect as I can get it. I mean, you might be off by like a hair or two. It's not gonna make a difference. Um, so you want to go ahead and get the wood row lined up, and there's a little, it's the wood row, it's a little dot right there on the oil pump. Get that all lined up. On the timing gears, um, the cam gears. Line those up with the back and pleat. Should be good to go. All right, guys. So we have everything set the top dead center, the camshafts, the crankshaft. Um, I have the crankshaft sensor in. I had to move the alternate out the way and ran it up, ran the wire up behind it because the actual wire harness that comes with it plugs into the stock distribution harness, just dis distributor harness. And it's like two wires that go to the ECU. But like I said, I didn't order i got it it's on this way so we just dropping on the um pretty much the actual kit kit instead of the harness right now the car won't be able to start anyway right now but um yeah so this is a gates rpm timing belt you see the number um this actual blue on it is felt it keeps the belt from stretching and everything good that's a good thing but the bad thing is if it goes to pop it won't pop it'll skip the teeth and probably cause engine damage or something i don't know so what you do, you just slide it on. What I do, I just firmly push it. Take it down here. Just follow my guys watching for the timing belt video. And it's just that simple, bro. You want all your tension on the, all your, your slack on this side. So when you pull the grenade pin to tighten it, everything's tight. So just like that, right on the edge, it doesn't have to be all the way back. Once the car starts up, if it, feels as though it has to slide back it'll slide back on its own this actually comes with a washer this is not an ordinary washer it has to be a washer for this this is the oem one it'll work for this so take it drop it in pile set the washer on the back pile so what you do is you take it you slide the bolt back Push the tensioner on, push it, slide the boot back, slide the belt on, bam, and it should be right. Uh, it's gonna be a doozy. There you go. There you go. Bam. All right, here's my gun. And this, when you tighten it, this should be able to move like this. It shouldn't be stiff. All right. My pulley, I gotta put my bracket back on, but I might worry about that right now. I'm supposed to have a long extension in this, but I'm gonna make it work. So you drop it down like that, pull it back up. I'll top with my head for any of this, but I am gonna torque it. But right now, we just throwing it all together and I go back over it with the torque. And um, I go back over it and torque everything down the spec. Not like that. Um, and the Super V World kit for the bottom for the crankshaft um, comes with one of these. It's not. It doesn't look like this though. But oh, this is like OEM. Good timing. Everything is top dead center still. And then you just pull the pin. That's it. And what I do when I pull the pin, I usually take it. And what you do, you just go all the way around 360, make sure nothing binds up. It's gonna be some slight tension just because you got compression. So just ah. if anything binds up, like when it binds, you won't be able to move it. So you have some pressure you gotta work through, and you hear the air escaping. I don't know if you can hear it.
what you do, you just Bam. Simple as that. You make sure everything line up. Bam. That's it. It's literally that simple. All right. So for the part you guys was waiting on, we're going to put the Super V World distributor delete kit on and close this thing up. It's cold. This probably be, it's cold out here. It's probably be the only thing I do today. All right, guys. So I got the bottom cover. So it's very, very important. This actually keeps the belt from walking off. Wanna make sure you put that back on. Uh, boom. Okay. All right. So I only got two bolts from my timing cover right now. Um, I'll go find the other bolts. Right now, I'm not really too pressed about it just in case I have to take everything off again. So that is just a just in case measure. Oh, I don't even have a socket for this size. Crap, I'm gonna go get it. Matter of fact, I just feed them on by half. And the wind is howling today, buddy. Look, you hit. <laughs> so what I'll do is sit on here. And I usually use these <clears throat> Allen key heads, uh, bolts, just for a cleaner look. I wouldn't advise you to do it because of this strip. Then you gotta go through a lot of stuff on getting these out of these strip. So, uh, you're gonna call that one tight enough. I'm gonna fit this one right here just because I might put the crankshaft pulley on right now. So, and the crankshaft pulley on, I won't be able to get to this one. Boom. All right, so we need one and tighten that up and one right here. Maybe one right here too. Let's see. That's the funny one. My cover's not in the best shape. I don't think anybody with a 2J cover is in the best shape unless it's brand new. That was actually brand new. I don't know what happened to it. But anyway, so. All right, now this is where we got to get the confusion out the way. Oh, look at that. That's perfect, bro. Everything pretty, pretty, jeez, bro. So, I guess that's why he sent us these bolts with it. So, these are the stock bolts. Oh yeah, these are longer, if you see. These are the ones he sent us, so we're gonna drop these ones on. I use, uh, excuse me, I use Loctite on mostly everything, but on stuff like this, I, I won't use Loctite on this. Just because I got to get this off maybe one day. So, 12. So, this is going to be the the doozy right here. Try to get everything together at once and get extension. Something is definitely bent. Okay, so is my back complete this bent. That's why that won't go all the way on. I just gotta get something to bend my back complete, but it's all good. All right, next. I think we would put this on next. Oh crap, that's another thing too. Look what I'm out here doing. Huh. Right. Like I said, my backing plate is bent. I bent this a long time ago, and while it was off the car, I forgot to bend it back in place. So we're about to bend it back in place. As soon as I get everything tightened back up. And that's perfect because the bracket doesn't really depend on this being flush anyway. So that's actually perfect in my case.
all right guys so now we shall put on a camshaft bracket this is going freaking really easy right now maybe i should not leave my cover on And that's one thing I wanted to leave my cover on, but I don't think I can. Let's see what this looking like. So if you see, see how my cover is like this side's in more and this side's out. I have no idea why that is like that. Maybe because my backing plate is bent. I'm not sure, but uh kind of not feeling it oh yeah it's because my back in place bent so i think once i bend this back out this will actually sit flush let me get a pair of pliers and bend it all right so i bent it back out it did get a little better this little how it was folding up here got a lot better um but um but yeah you see i'm gonna spin it real quick see if we get a spin on it See? Yeah. Good gracious. <laughs> Alright, so this piece is where the sig the sensor actually pings off of. I'm gonna call it ping. I would get, it's probably a proper name, but we're gonna call it pinging. Oh I got it right there on the Intake side, I'm not sure if you can see it. So you're actually supposed to shim it. Oh yeah, you can see it, now you see it. So you get it down to here. Right there, and then you stick your shim down in there. I'm gonna go get the shim real quick. Buddy, it is cold. <laughs> it's like, it's not even really the weather it's gonna sound retarded. It's not even the real weather that's cold. It's the actual wind that's making it bad. So like, it's not even bad, it's the wind making it bad. So, got my shims. Uh, huh. Shims, good gracious. Let me hit my monster real quick. Got my filler gauges. Go ahead, check it. Bang. So, then using the filler gauges, set the gap between 0 0.3 to 0 0.8 max. Use the cam shims provided, which is these things right there. So it says, I guess it's like a, it's a nice, nice threshold for real. We might not need them, we'll see. So 0 0.03 to 0 0.08. So, got four. So, probably should tighten those up first and then. All right, so this one checked out to 0 0.06. This one is like 0 0.01 or something like that. So, I got to put a shim in this one. So, I got to sit the camera now. I'm gonna pull the bolts out, sit the shims right here on this side. No, on between the center and the bracket so it pushes the center back some. All right guys, so I actually took the, the um, I actually took the cover off so that way I could get an exact measurement on the tolerance, what an air gap between the center and that screw right there that it pings off of. Um, pretty sure I'm doing this right. So, got three millimeters. And when it comes to using the filler gauge, I had already checked it, but, so the reason why I took the cover off is because every time, every time I went to stick the filler gauge down behind the the cover it would actually bend it and give me a bad read and so i took it off and i could actually go to the side so when you go to when you go to try to measure this 
you don't you don't want this to go to the side or anything like that you want it to go as straight as possible so just about as best as i can get it and i like the filling on that i checked this one already so we are at 0.3 millimeters a little bit over 0.3 millimeters on uh both sides um however the exhaust side i did have to put a thin it's like a thinner shim right here between the sensor and the bracket i'm pretty sure you probably can't you can see it a little bit it's like a little air gap like a little gap you see like a little gap in between the sensor and the bracket and this one is just flat like so this one was perfect i just had to put the shim on this one and like i said when you uh when you're checking it it'll be like this flat bolt here and you want to spin this all the way around to his right hand in front of the sensor like i did on this side so yeah it should be good to go i'm gonna go ahead and put everything together and yeah it should be good um so even with the cover poured off the measurement will still be the same because I'm just undoing that bolt and that bolt on the actual bracket. I'm not taking the sensors out. So the tile, the air gap should still be the same between the air gap between the sensor and the screw it pings off of should still be the same. So I would suggest you guys um, check your air gap with the cover off. It'll be the easiest way and get your most accurate read. All right, guys. So got the floor damper on um the kits on super v world kits on so we just gotta pretty much plug this where the distributor used to go and that should be it for the day just tape a residue don't think it's gonna just slide in easy so eh, kind of easy just ah I gotta put the camera down again. All right, guys, that's, that's that should be about it. So that's like a 20, 30 minute job. I mean, I, I don't have the harness, so I had to plug this up. Then the harness comes from these two, going to like one big harness. And like I said, it plugs into the distributor, factory distributor plug. You gotta run the two camshaft sensor wires to DC or something like that. We'll come back at it once I get the wires though, but if you see pretty simple um didn't tighten these up because you got to torque these down i usually do that once everything's on and the belt's actually holding everything together and it's too cold right now i don't want to break my bolts so pretty much came as far as we can go just still a bunch of stuff to go still a bunch of stuff to go i pushed my luck enough today um so you see me a little bit of progress but that should be all I can do today. It's like windy in my hood. I usually sit the hood on top of the car. And it's so windy that the wind blew the hood. And like now it's on my back glass. Hopefully it didn't crack the glass. But yeah, real simple. It's like super duper easy, man. And it looks nice. Yeah, it looks presentable. And this, I would actually like bolt that onto there have that up behind it so you won't see it but these two you just won't be able to hide the wire it is what it is but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and clean my mess up should be all i can get done look <laughs> crazy windy bro crazy but yeah until next time guys